It is an AI product launch week as YouTube announces a slew of new features for creators. Welcome back to the AI Breakdown Brief, all the AI headline news you need in around five minutes. Later today, our main episode is going to be about all the Microsoft announcements, and we kick off the brief with another set of just-announced AI products, this time from Google. Yesterday, Google held its Made on YouTube event, and basically all of the big announcements had to do in some way with artificial intelligence. The TLDR of all of this is that they are trying to make it easier for people to create content directly for YouTube. What does that look like? Well, a bunch of different things. First of all, there is a new app they're calling YouTube Create, which is a editing and production app for mobile creators. You have to think that this is going directly after TikTok and CapCut. And while this isn't AI itself, it has a bunch of AI features that really give it life. One of those is called Dream Screen, which gives creators the ability to create AI-generated images or video for the background of their shorts. Now, of course, right now, people could use other tools to go make those images or videos and then bring them into another creation suite, but this simplifies that process down to one single place and a native prompting system. But what if you don't know what to create content about? Well, they have a new feature for that as well that they're calling AI Insights. They write, YouTube Studio will tap generative AI to spark video ideas and draft outlines to help creators brainstorm. The insights will be personalized for each channel and based on what audiences are already watching on YouTube. We've been testing a version of AI-powered tools in YouTube Studio with creators, and more than 70% of those surveyed said it's helped them develop and test ideas for videos. Now, this is interesting to me as someone who obviously creates a ton of content for YouTube. Not so much because I'm bereft of ideas. Obviously, the artificial intelligence field keeps us well-stocked in terms of things to talk about. But I'm quite keen on the idea of YouTube cross-referencing not only what my audience is consuming, but what other audiences that are related are consuming as well to share what it thinks might be good topics. Especially for videos that aren't strictly about AI news, I can see this being incredibly valuable. Okay, so we've got YouTube Create, the new mobile app. We've got Dream Screen, which is the AI-generated image or video backgrounds for shorts. And we've got AI Insights, again, which they call tools to spark inspiration. But like a TV salesman of old would say, that's not all. Once you've got your idea and your Dream Screen background, what about the perfect music? Yes, you guessed it, YouTube has an AI-assisted search for that as well. They write, simply type in a description of your content and AI will suggest the right music at the right price. Now, finally, the one that I'm perhaps in the long run most excited about of any is a new AI-powered dubbing tool that will allow creators to dub content into other languages. YouTube acquired a company called Aloud, and this is that technology coming to bear. Now, there are a lot of tools out there, many of which you might have seen on Twitter or in my newsletter, that are bringing generative AI to language translation. But again, the value of having it natively in YouTube, in the creation suite, especially if it works at a comparable level to those other tools, is just absolutely huge. We talked earlier this week about how the updates that Google announced for Bard weren't so much transformational and the type of thing that was going to get the techies on Twitter really excited, but were the types of things that were just highly functional developments that were going to make AI much more useful in a day-to-day -day kind of way. This set of YouTube announcements is absolutely in that same spirit, with none of it being some remarkable technological advance, although automated dubbing is still pretty amazing even if lots of companies are doing it now, but instead just better integration into the actual production suite that is likely to impact a huge number of creators. Now, staying on Google for just a moment, there's been a really interesting back and forth in the news this week around whether or not they want to ditch Broadcom as their chip supplier. Basically, The Information wrote an article a couple days ago called To Reduce AI Costs, Google wants to ditch Broadcom as its TPU server chip supplier. The scoop argued that Google has extensively discussed dropping Broadcom as the supplier of its AI chips as early as 2027 in order to save up to 30% and subsequently fully design its tensor processing units in-house. Now, in the wake of this news, Broadcom's stock price went down 4.3%, which is a pretty significant drop to be prompted by just a single report. Now, of course, this shows how much the market values the artificial intelligence business and is pricing in where companies fit in that matrix. After the report, Google said on Thursday that it did not see any change in its relationship with Broadcom, which helped pared back those losses. So ultimately, this was sort of a nothing burger story, although I'd be surprised if the information's reporting is wrong, that there had at least been these conversations internally, but it is a good reminder of just how significant AI is to the current market environment. Now, one of the things that is likely to happen over the next couple of years is that in addition to building out new software capacities on their own, a lot of the giants of software today are going to be acquiring startups to bring new AI-related services in-house. An example of that is that Salesforce is acquiring AirKit.ai, which is a tool for building AI customer service agents. 
Now, Salesforce is well acquainted with AirKit's founders as they've also previously sold a different company to Salesforce. And again, more than this specific announcement itself, what's interesting, I think, is this trend that we're likely to see of growing consolidation in the market. Now, part of the reason that companies might want to be consolidated into the giants is that competing with them is going to be extremely difficult. As a for example, you've heard me experiment with a couple different voice cloning tools on this podcast, including Play.ht as well as Eleven Labs, but iOS 17 now has a native voice cloning tool as well. To do the voice cloning, you have to go through about 20 to 30 minutes of completing different phrases, similar to how some other services are trained, and then bingo bango, you get your voice clone. I haven't tried this out yet, but I certainly will be doing so, and I will report back here about how it compares to the state of the art from companies like Eleven Labs. Moving over to the policy side of things, AI continues to be a hot-button topic in Washington, with the latest news being that John Thune, the Senate's number two Republican, the Senate Minority Whip, is set to unveil a new AI legislative package that he calls Light Touch and is explicitly designed to offer an alternative to what he assumes or argues is likely to be a heavy-handed plan from Senate Majority Leader Chuck Schumer. Now, the legislation is not out yet, but Politico writes that it would, quote, require companies to assess the impact of artificial intelligence systems and self-certify the safety of systems seen as particularly risky. Now, one of the things that makes this interesting is that even though it is explicitly presented in opposition to a forthcoming as yet unseen bill from Senator Chuck Schumer, it still has bipartisan support, at least from from Democrat Senator Amy Klobuchar. Others, including industry executives such as Ryan Hageman at IBM, have lauded the bill saying it strikes a, quote, very moderate balance. Now, someone who might be unlikely to find the contents of that bill particularly appealing is Connor Leahy. Connor tweeted yesterday, I had a great time addressing the House of Lords about extinction risk from AGI. They were attentive and discussed some parallels between where we are now and non-nuclear proliferation efforts during the Cold War. Connor says, I think there should be a complete moratorium on development of AIs using unprecedented levels of computing power. Every time we do the next bigger AI run, we don't know what's going to pop out of the other side. Someday it's going to be Russian roulette, and if you ever find yourself playing Russian roulette, I have a recommendation. Stop. But the AGI companies are not stopping, and this is where the government comes in. Now, as to Connor's recommendations for what specifically government should do, he had three pillars. One was liability for developers and users, second was a cap on computing power, and third was a global AI kill switch. Now, of course, there was a lot of discussion around this, and frankly, a lot of disagreement. But one interesting part to help understand where Connor sits is a back and forth he had with Jack Clark from Anthropic. Clark writes, what happens to GPT-4 if your cap is implemented? Connor responds, ideally, I would want it to be rolled back and deleted out of proper precaution, but I am open to arguments around grandfathering in older models. Now, the EACCs just found this to be absolutely insane and exemplary of how out of whack, to them at least, AI safety advocates have got. Accelerate Harder said, is this the most deranged Doomer take? Gabrielle Garrett says, this is such an unhinged take of his, it's insane. Why are Doomers getting these enormous stages in front of governments? The argument, of course, here being that GPT-4 is self-evidently not problematic, and so if they're trying to roll back even that, can we really trust their takes on what we should be concerned about? Now, one new person who has waded into the AI and X-Risk conversation is Artifact and Instagram co-founder Kevin Systrom. In a conversation at TechCrunch Disrupt, he likened it to former technology revolutions and basically said that people always get up in arms this way because they can't imagine the benefits of the future after which these technologies have been fully adopted. He said people are superpowered because of these technologies, and I think that's much more likely to happen. So for now, friends, the debate rages from the stages of tech conferences to the halls of the House of Lords to Discords, Twitters, and yes, even YouTube videos and podcasts. Thanks as always for listening or watching, and I'll be back soon with the main AI Breakdown.